Today we'll be talking about the world-renowned graphic designer Milton Glasser. A brief biography, he was born on June 26, 1929 in the Bronx, New York, to Hungarian Jewish immigrants during the times of World War I and II, which was very difficult on his Jewish identity. He is known for his graphic designs, specifically his DC logo, Brooklyn Brewery logo, as well as the I Love New York logo. The first poster we'll be looking at is called Bird, which was created in 1965. It was a silk screen, which means there was a use of mesh and stencils, which allowed the ink to permeate some areas of the canvas, whereas completely rejecting the others. This creates a strong contrast between the positive and the negative spacing. Looking at the bird itself, we notice that there are many other birds making it up, including ones of varying different colors. Most notably, orange and blue are complementary colors, meaning they're completely opposite on the color wheel. It is 42 inches high and 42 inches wide. The next poster we'll be talking about is Bob Dylan, created in 1967. Commissioned by Bob Dylan's recording studio after a nearly fatal motorcycle accident. It was created due to the fact many of his fans actually presumed him to be dead. The studio decided that there at least needed to be some hope amongst his fans and they wanted to create some excitement for his upcoming album. Looking at the poster itself, we can see a sharp contrast between the somber silhouettes and the undulating colorful hair, making the focal point obviously the hair. Its many colors and its curves and its fluid motion really gives and invokes a raw emotion inside though for many people it could be completely different but personally it invokes some sort of positive emotion maybe because it's all colorful contrasting with a somber background it gives a sense of life to the poster the poster itself is actually 33 by 22 inches the next art piece we'll be looking at is the new york magazine logo which was created in 1968 Milton Glasser co-founded the magazine and personally created the logo. At the beginning of its creation, it was just a ragtag group of writers and artists who had a dream of creating the next best thing. It was actually held in the same building as Glasser's Pushpin Studio, which prided itself in taking a new approach to graphic design. Even nowadays, when you look at the New York magazine logo, you think of it as timeless. It hasn't aged in our eyes, and it doesn't seem old at all. Aretha, which is created in 1968, was made in honor of singer Aretha, who used her beautiful voice not just to entertain, but to make a change as well. There are many bold colors used, which all complement one another, and all these bold colors could actually be Glacier's way of artistically encapsulating Aretha's bold voice and beautiful personality. It is 25 by 25 inches. The Give Earth a Chance poster, which was created in 1970, is created in time for the first Earth Day. Its medium is lithograph on paper, and it is one of his first, but certainly not last, environmentally inclined poster. Looking at it, we can see that there's Earth hovering in the middle of what looks to be a field of grass, which very obviously is mechanically mowed down. It is tampered behind walls, and all the colors match one another. Greens and blue are the majority, of course. It is a very beautiful poster because it has this sense of human in the lines, because it's not just ruler drawn. There's something very animate about the way he made the lines and the way he made the earth. You can almost see it twirl on its axis. The Temple University Music Festival, which was created in 1975. This poster incorporates its usual vibrant color palette. It is made up of a woman who appears to have a swan on her head, and the majority of the background is a very lively orange. It is 35 inches in height and 24 inches wide, and as usual, it is lithograph. The next art piece I'll be looking at is of the iconic I Love New York design. It was commissioned by the Deputy Commissioner of New York in a time of extreme financial trouble. 
and it was used to elevate the spirits of New Yorkers and to give them a sense of unity. As you can tell, uh, fonting is very important in here, and the use of the heart instead of love actually creates a sense of abstraction, which is a lot easier to iconicize. In 1978, Milton Glasser created the iconic DC Comics logo. It has been going through several phases up to that point, and there have been many renditions of the actual comic logo. There is a balance between thick and thin lines, which it helps captivate the reader, and it is one of his more recognizable logos. Sony Full Color Poster, created in 1980, was inspired by the title Full Color Sound. As you can tell by the colorful ear against a black backdrop silhouette of a man, the focal point of this poster is to encapsulate the word sound in images. Uh, it is based on the idea that words or even sounds can paint an image in one's mind, and it is 36 by 24 inches. The next poster is of the Saratoga Festival in 1980. While we're looking at the poster, we can see a figure which is actually based on the Greek god Pan, who is the god of music, and he seems to be dreaming, and uh, Milton Glasser's usual psychedelic style comes into play here with vibrant colors that are highly contrasting. Um, it is very bright, and it really grabs the audience. In 1984, Milton Glasser created a poster for the Olympic Games. In the poster itself, there is a Corinthian column sitting smack dab in the middle, and coming onto it is a bunch of Olympic rings in the style of a ring toss. The Corinthian style column is a tribute to the game's roots back in Greece, and the psychedelic colorings has a very vibrant feel to it, and really draws the viewer in. It's also uh, complementary to the colors of the rings itself. Angels in America, which was created in 1993, is a poster for a musical. The musical itself was being directed by a friend of his. Um, looking at the poster itself, we see a heavy contrast between the angel that is crouched and huddled in on itself and the glowing yellow swarming around it. And uh, the focal point, of course, being the wings because it is making sure to symbolize angels. Color plays a big part. The next poster is for the short-lived gallery, Lustre Gallery in 1990. In it, there is a being floating, very fluid with drapes moving all around against a black backdrop. On the drapes itself are what seems to be hundreds of eyes and the colors itself are of the rainbow and is really beautiful because it isn't really highly saturated where it hurts the eyes but it all seems very watercolor like very natural human in 2014 Milton Glasser created a poster for the popular show Mad Men. It was actually inspired by his Bob Dylan poster in that one section is so lively and fluid and another is completely contrasting in some static way and completely dark. It incorporates his usual colorful and high contrasting style. His very last poster created in 2020 was labeled Together. It was a new project and its goal was to uplift spirits during a pandemic our pandemic. Um, the range of typefaces blend seamlessly together and the bold colors really give a sense of happiness to whoever reads it.